Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Hi. Um. <laughs> ah, this has been a game for a hot minute, but, you know, I've, I've never played it. You know what? Maybe I should cosplay Colonel Sanders, because look at, just look at him. Just look at him. He's finger looking good. Anyway, this is I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger looking good dating simulator. And I'm going to play some of it for you today. Yeah. <laughs> so new game. This is what the channel's becoming. Um, hi, if you are new here. Hi, my name is Seth or Anthus. And I like to play games and cosplay and ghost hunt and just all kinds of stuff. Um, lately, most of my cosplay content is on TikTok because it's quick and easy to do. So we're doing this here. Um, I guess I'll just put in Anthus. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Or you could wake up now, now, now! Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Shut the fuck up! Oh my god. Up and at him! Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Look at the freaking posters on the wall. Is that BTS back there? I don't know. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What will you wear? Time begins to fly by and you find your imagination getting away from you. You need to take this seriously. I better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. You bust through your morning checklist. Teeth brushed, hair combed, pits deodorized. Nothing can stop you now. You confidently grab a biscuit, strut out the door, and head off to class. Oh my god, that sound! Just what you needed to get your blood flowing. <laughs> so, oh my god. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, Anthus. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm... Because I sure am excited, a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What the? It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but... Well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam, raised by master chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quick sandbox, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're gonna do great. <laughs> but with University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's famous three-day-only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. <laughs> a sweet girl, Miriam, has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Oh, that Miriam, don't do that. Should you prep pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? I'm gonna pep talk her. Remember last month when we saw the fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. I know she looked spooky, but she was so sweet. And she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tow the tower? <laughs> okay. And that other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting for so long to be a handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time we'll be graduating and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking on no time at all. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. <laughs> can you believe I cut them myself? Yeah. Yeah, I can believe it. You, you can definitely believe it! <laughs> I, um... I cannot believe it. Before you can get another word out, you... Are rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey! It's Ashley! <laughs> Fucking Ashley. Your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. Hello, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave Anthus shins alone. They're perfectly normal shins. Ugh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everybody. 
If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend. Van Van the Man Man has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight, you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, the rockin' glutes. Ahem, <clears throat> Van Van? You rang! <laughs> You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. He looks like a JoJo character. I can't believe that University Cooking School Academy for Learning will allow ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You think they just hand us our diplomas now? Or maybe a higher on honest, honest profes professors? <laughs> you amateurs could learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Let's see you later, losers. Oh, Jesus Christ. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. Oh, okay. Oopsie. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you! I think you mean, thank you? My name is Pop! It was named after Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. That's what his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Hi, Pop. I'm Anthus, so... Are you gonna make me hold this door all day? No. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Aww. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? I think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scruffy little pooch takes his place at the podium in the front of the class. Adorable! Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Yeah. Please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and a little fluffy, but I still demand respect, Wolf. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. And Shelly, someone close the window. And then. He walks in. <laughs> You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him. It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders... <laughs> A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone's looking at you and you're not entirely wrong. Oh. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. <laughs> Maybe we should open that window back up before faucet pits <laughs> melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Hold on just a second. No one talks to my friend like that. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is with all you really weird insults? Besides, when Anthus sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. <laughs> I only have one option, and I guess I'm going to ting clean myself up. There you go. It's a good thing you didn't forget about that deodorant this morning. This classroom is hot, hot, hot. <sighs> Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legend, present, past, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer really miss quiet late to class is bad enough been interrupting my monologue you're on a fast track out of here young man are you sure you're even in the right place do you recognize me this is my third year in school with you as my teacher everyone stares at him blankly does no one remember me i'm you're expelled if you utter one more word before i finish let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable 
Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town in his tiny wheels. You turn to see the student Sprinkles is referring to, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. Oh my god. <laughs> or... The class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm. Your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkles' reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. But what kind? Um... Well, this is Colonel Sanders, so I'm gonna give you a chicken snack. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkles' eyes goes wide as he locks onto it. His favorite! Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for a new star student. Woo. The furry professor immediately devours a snack, leaving your hand slick with a coat of warm doggy drool. You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to, su wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Anthus, there's still a seat here! <gasps> it seems that no one has claimed the seat next to me, if you're interested. I HAVE TO SIT BY COLONEL SANDERS! This, like, what, this, the, what, what's the point otherwise? You mean to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me this seat. I've only had two rules. Do all you can, and do it the best you can. It's the only way you ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. That's so inspiring! A little off topic if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you settle into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz! Yay! A quiz about me! Shut the fuck up, Pop! This incredibly important and surprisingly sure quiz will tell me if you're ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knife sharp and your focus sharper, here comes question number one! If train A is traveling to point B, and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? I. Uh, Extremely! Looking at you, Pop! That's right! Forest is to tree as chicken is to... <laughs> I'm sorry, these options. It's feather, of course. That's right! What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? Well, we did talk about sporks. Um, and spork is efficient because you can use it as a spoon or as a fork. So it's a spork! That's right! What food is best for a broken heart? Oh, anything, as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. That's right! Is Sprinkles a good boy? He's a talking dog that teaches at culinary school. He is the best boy! That's right. Your total score is 5 out of 5, perfect score! Wow, be honest, did you cheat? You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. <laughs> Hot diggity at this! You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make, Uwu. woo Time for lunch! Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've been eaten, ever eaten at all. It makes sense that a school decided to cooking, dedicated to cooking, would also be serious about eating. It's the Stewart Cafeteria. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Hey everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just want to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was- Shut the fuck up. Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was- Shut up. Colonel Sanders is talking. It's about lunch. Everyone cheers! But I- Shh! Lunch, lunch, lunch. She said, SHUT UP! In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Uh -huh. That must be the smell I smelled! Indeed, that smell! You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Does Juman Han is gay? Is this! 
Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept! Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, Stop thinking and start eating! For years, I've been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I can say about that. Why, you think we want your stupid s secret recipe, dude? Sure, no, my dude, no. I'm just... Uh, <laughs> I... <laughs> I'm just drafting a last will and testament in case um one of those ingredients is a uh, poison. Got him. <laughs> he looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at a sick burn. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he's destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants them all to herself. Mm. Oh, please. Mm. Well, Van Van the Bad Men, if you don't want any... I'll take his. Well, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now, there's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Ooh, okay. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try and identify, savor the moment and everything it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim towards the light. Mmm. I'm gonna... I'm gonna try to identify every flavor. You let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt? Maybe. Pepper? Too obvious? Oregano? Basil? Maybe. But there's something else. Something too dark. Something spicy. You dig deeper. Deeper and deeper. Yes, even deeper still until you find it. Could it be... <gasps> The Krabby Patty secret formula. He really did it. How bold. How adventurous to use. Redacted. You try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and realize that this information was meant to remain a secret, and yet, now you know. The mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. As you look around, you realize that everyone in the room is consumed by the lunch. No one noticed that you've traveled through space and time. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? Oh, Jesus, his face. <gasps> How bold of you to come out and ask. It's an- Oh my god, Jesus Christ. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. <laughs> it's clearly not going to give up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You've got Moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, and then he leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use... Redacted. It's something my great-grandmother taught me. Wow! You <laughs> never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you get it. Some if you searched. And bling. Definitely isn't the flavor you tasted before, so now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe, but you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped up in the huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared! While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. 
Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say, the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Ooh, neg no. Wow. Wow, one with a big idea. And an additional ingredient. No. Hmm. Show my personality. Um. Neg, I, I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna show him my strength. You know, I've been thinking about your secret recipe. Of course you were. You don't simply forget a flavor combination like that. That's exactly right. I remember it because I've tasted it before. I stopped at a random fried chicken stand the other day, and their chicken tasted exactly like yours. Mm. Oh, shit. Did you just compare my recipe to a random fried chicken stand? Well, yes, yes, I did, but it was a really good stand, especially considering it was frozen <gasps> first. God damn it, no, can I go back? What does this mean? No! No! Frozen chicken! Colonel Sanders struggles to conceal his emotions, fighting back tears of anger. I can't believe you say such a thing, God damn it! You realize you've done irreparable damage to your relationship, from which it can never recover. He's hurt. How could you? Hey, Anthus, you saw that this game was called a dating sim, right? If that's your idea of dating, this is not the game for you. Oh, try again, try again, I'm sorry! I'm gonna... Oh... No, his his recipe's perfect. I'm just gonna be modest but thoughtful this time. Oh, thank god, okay. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but com comforting. The interplay be between salty, savory, and peppery, it was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Anthus. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena <laughs> where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they can need. Look at this place, it's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh no, we have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. Me and you, if that wasn't clear. I know, Miriam, you're crying, but look at look at him. Just just look at him. Want to be my partner? Aww. Sure, Anthus. I'll prepare a station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. Be bop bop. Hmm. Oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Well, I thought it's obvious it's Clank. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay, I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Oh my goodness. Hold there, fella. We don't even have the, know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Bzz. Tissue? I hardly know you. <laughs> okay. Clank judders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your cooking classwork. Alright, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a, ba pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Oh, God. <sighs> Steak tartare. Mm. Uh, um, no. I think we're going to have to do mashed potatoes and gravy uh, following the theme of uh, KFC. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes <gasps> and gravy. <laughs> I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. <sighs> Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? 
We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business, and you'd better keep your fingers off my man. Mm. Did someone call for me? <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, no jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Anthus' dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? They're giving me, like, kill the kill vibes. Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. What is this music? <laughs> oh, howdy there, Ashley. Van Van, are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looked like Anthus was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These younger amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Huh? <laughs> doubt it. <gasps> Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. Oh my god, I just belched him. So sorry, after all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about that makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at your heart. <laughs> you, you need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Oh, oh god. Turn to Colonel Sanders. Hunk of hunks in your time of need. I'm here to learn and express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I choose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders choose me. Isn't that right? Chose. The businessman respects all fair agreements, from contracts to handshakes. I took on Anthus as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Anthus' natural talent or their loyalty. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that, in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed and boiled the potatoes into a perfectly creamy mash texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guides you through the steps and you know so well why your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth brown gravy smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be proud. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab a hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let it go. The two of you stand, holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be co with Colonel Sanders. And then, but with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. And then, do something. Scooping up a fingerful, Van Fan tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Anthus. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'll both be better prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potato space? Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes and gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty, braised tentacle of octopus and my s <laughs> silky saltwater sauce. Played it on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. Oh my god. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. You mean axe. No, don't! Something about the dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think it's the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It's been eaten. I, uh... I think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him! <laughs> Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it's gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped into Pop's mouth. 
Puff winces in pain for just a moment, and then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. The entire class gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back into reality. It would appear that Pops' enthusiasm for trying new things, despite all the obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. Inoculated? Okay. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Hello? I just turned into a ghost over here? <laughs> Seeing that you're shaken up by the really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on! You follow Colonel Sanders out the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Anthus? There's something I need to tell you. <laughs> Hold it right there! There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef in the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working toward that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights, like, so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. <gasps> hey, no, you, I, you. Shut up. I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. Oh, Jesus Christ. The Spork Monster is here to fight a hero. Oh. I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me just as I was letting my guard down and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me because I'm a monster. See? And he's rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fighting sequence! What will you do? I'm gonna attack. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love! <laughs> Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. That attack really upset the spork monster. The spork monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Attack. You decide to go on the attack. It worked last time, right? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork monster won't forget this. Spork monster is really feeling threatened by your attack. Spork monster focuses their mashed mind and draws an energy from Mon Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Um, by attacking, I guess. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? The only one I have. Cook with love does one damage. At this rate, the semester will probably be over before this fight is. Spork monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Spork monster uses... Utilitensil! You take two damage from the attack? If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive this battle. Okay, then I'll defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation? You curl into a ball. I'm not cut out for this! Feeling vulnerable, spork monster prepares for its ultimate attack, rounded edge. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens! <laughs> Pot Pie Power Pinch! <laughs> Pot Pie Power Pinch does 10 damage! Spork Monster is defeated. You saved me! An injured Spork Monster stew spews steam into the night. Oh god. I'm gonna spare this wretched beast. You manage to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he's still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back, like you said. The spork monster scuttles off into the night. You defeated The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. 
You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm. Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up and over you as you're tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are wild. No, oh, Jesus Christ. You awake on day two and attempt to pro <laughs> that's a word. process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders' cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used... Wow! And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the old school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the Spork Monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be... Um... I think I might like Clank. Like him? Like, like, like? I know it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a total sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? Most popular girls in school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, he was so popular that he was voted prom king at the school he didn't even go to, and he was also the <laughs> and it was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. I'm thinking that maybe something got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, you're a thing now. We definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? However, you don't tell her that you know a second ingredient, too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, like I said, that... A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miran checks to make sure that you're alone before continuing. Uh-huh. Dots. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices! The man even gave me some to show what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super-duper rare dried flower petals, and that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. Home? Home? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> he was so nice. He even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with him, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyway, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe, and besides, I only know the one ingredient. So, I doubt I'd be of much use to anyone. Please, 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 it would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? Um, I'll make up a fake ingredient because that's not fair. You quickly think of a fake ingredient. I don't know about... It was Eye of Newt. I know, sounds like some kid of a witch's potion, but what can you do? Eye of Newt, wow! Her eyes light up imagining such a thing, you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. <gasps> it's Colonel Sanders! He's arriving at school! <laughs> Run to him! You decide that the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him. 
Surely he'll sweep you up in the back of a stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. Oh, Colonel. My Colonel. <laughs> oh, God. However, your sudden movement surprised the horse and it rears up kicking you directly in the face. The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. In the darkness, you see a vision. <laughs> oh, Anthus, I'm here to deliver you a message. Not this guy. It is important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end. So you know it's serious. I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great pharmacy. Pharmacy. <laughs> Prophecy. Or last on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. And that name is... But before you can continue, you're suddenly awake. Oh, jeez. You wake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. He roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Or is that just his natural seasoned musk? <laughs> Um, oh my god. Is it, is it too soon? Lean in for a kiss. Whoa, 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 you've known him for a day. Are you really sure? I guess you must be. You put your arms around Colonel Sanders' neck and pull him in for a kiss. Oh. But he turns his face and you awkwardly kiss his ear. You can feel him shudder. Too soon, you clearly mistook his compassion for love. Your soul crawls inside of itself and you instantly die of embarrassment. <laughs> okay, this time I'm not gonna kiss him. I'm gonna compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. Maybe he shouldn't be riding a horse to school. Maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who was in the wrong here. But one thing's for sure, the Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Who the fuck is that picture of on the wall? What the fuck? Like counterfeiting recipes bad. Ex oh, I accidentally clicked. That's fine. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder. But he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why don't you make a bee and mine your own wax? <laughs> what the fuck are they? Um, I'm gonna tell them to stop acting immature. You immediately dress the rivals down for the immature behavior. Culinary school is to be respected. This kind of nonsense is a waste of everyone's time. Now you've upset them. Oh, and you're the emperor of a cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity, and it takes... Panache? Sure. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what it was what it was that they were hiding, and you instantly recognize it. It's a book! Just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't been studying the book. They've just got pop pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing. <laughs> Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep beep. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Fan Fan's meaty foot. <gasps> hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. As well. <sighs> Why do you think you're... Why? <laughs> Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer! That was Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it will be over for me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone is completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? gentlemen. Get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. <laughs> he's panting, which doesn't seem to be that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. 
Sprinkles stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanders! Sprinkles jumps on you and looks your face. Down, boy. Down. Uh, off hopping? That comment shouted by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Sorry, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review this global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly, you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, <laughs> it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Anthus, naturally this appears to be a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? Um. Um. Pepper. A brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way, so naturally you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body's not prepared for the heat. This pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. Ooh, I love those. <laughs> it feels like forever as you trip through the universe. My friend, ho. Oh. This guy again. I'm here to give you an important message, ho. Oh. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <clears throat> I was saying, to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... <clears throat> Sorry, I think I've still got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll, I'll work through... That <laughs> to fulfill <laughs> the prophecy. Cough, cough. You must. You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Oh man! You come to and find everyone staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth. Now it's gone forever. <laughs> you think to yourself, "Geez, I should pay better better attention." We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your arrivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via timed competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Um, yeah, you're on. A bit of lunchtime competition, huh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down to it, then so be it. I'm not the fool, you're the fool, fool. Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, Anthus. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sports ring court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. Oh, Jesus Christ. Then a huge fight <laughs> blasts you in the face, flashing the words timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, whoop. I stand corrected. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. I hope this little message lifts you to vigor- vic no, fucking, fucking victory, fucking shit up, okay. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now it's my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had a chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one, and you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast, if the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Uh huh. It, uh, it, it always puts. Oh, fucking. Fuck. Where are you thinking it? Because you're in the game. You're gonna need to season that chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices did he use? Eleven! That's right. You might not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed, headed in the right direction. Tail wagon intensifies now that you've got some basic steps going. It's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind do others, others flavor? Gratitude! That's right. You must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You'd better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never get, forget where you came from. Every day, you meditate on his advice. Draw energy from that place. What would be great to have had a Where does it come from? Oh, fuck. Oh, time his dreams were born. That's right. <laughs> this is your sign. You're not going to miss it. No. <laughs> okay. You try to shut out the noise of the arena, focus on your cooking. What is the sign of success? Sizzling. Fuck. It's silence. Don't make me get the spray bottle. Next question. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Anthus. He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you only makes you totally forget what you're doing. I'm really sweaty now. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoons full of gravy? Oh god. Fuck. God. 
Okay. <laughs> You're stranded on a desert island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. That's right. Fucking walk on the beach. What does that have to do with crafting fucking bis biscuits? Woof. <laughs> You're really struggling to keep up. Huh. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's a colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough and stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Yikes! I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. Where you might not have any hands, but Anthus does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way, and a hard way. You don't get far by doing the easy way. When you hear everyone talk and you realize how serious your error was, you immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. And the snow! Oh. You're not fast enough your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. The battle's over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish, ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two, on account of Anthus's injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Oh, well, okay. Under this white chocolate dome, you find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Anthus to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring the creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Sh 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 shut the fuck up, Ashley. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside- oh. Ew. Inside you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette atop a slice of honeycomb ice cream two ways, tender nougat and pearls of blueberry jelly. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger into the chocolate mm. sauce. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> <gasps> oh, you! <laughs> as he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks with his mustache. I'm going to internalize the rage that I feel. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash, and they fall off your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the, to the quad to be alone. Really? Okay. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a, st a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. <laughs> I'll never be a master chef. Failure is part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you, enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. Yeah, that's a word. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I lost my business partner to a gunfight. And I lost my innocence when I picked up a firearm and put a bullet in my rival. He survived. For a while, anyhow. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together. Which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved, then, that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. 
One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Hey, shut up, shut the fuck up, Pops. Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. Hates the Spork Monster. Borko? It is I. I know I said I wouldn't be back, but after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but... I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Oh, thanks, Borko. I'm glad there's no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spark monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were a human once? Well, no. I was a golden retriever. But I was still a student. Until one day, some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. A magic spell book? Precisely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. It sounds like there's some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Anthus, together, I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. A personal invite! You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. <laughs> what Jesus Christ. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, though, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy, or something crispy. Both, perhaps? Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him, or keep it a secret, just for you? Reveal it. Reveal it all. You decide that you're just as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping in ice all day. I present to you... My original coleslaw. A shredded cabbage dish... Dish... <laughs> glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' look hallway. Oh, I fucking read it correctly! Hide away! <laughs> Magnificent. Together you chow down on the creamy slaw, until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I could admire its taste later and think back on this moment. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please, make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about Colonel. Okay. This must be where he keeps the secret recipe. You think for a moment. What number is important to Colonel Sanders? Then it dawns on you. As soon as you turn the dial to 11, 11, 11, the safe opens. Inside it, you find a single note. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? <laughs> Tap on an item to discover. An adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor. From the goatee and mustache combo he sports, you figure this must be Colonel Sanders himself. That, or maybe it's the drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. Who frames a baby picture of just themselves? Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of the company they founded, am I right? The photo appears to be Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt? Maybe this is where he discovered one of his secret herbs and spices? <gasps> 
I think he's... No, I gotta look more. You gaze out across the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Just then the ghost of the student pops up. Are you thinking of heading out the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my, na my name right now. It's... Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the window a crack and the ghost of the student is swept out with a breeze. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on the corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic. It's real. Taxidermy? Must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The true state of bird of the great state of Kentucky. If y'all follow me on Instagram, I'm very obvious about this. I, too, live in Kentucky. And I have seen Colonel Sanders' grave. <laughs> A lock of silver hair is woven, woven, woven through the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just silvery in color. It's actually made of spun silver. You take a closer look at the large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, Here lie the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Here lies Squidward's hopes and dreams. What a baby. Poor guy. <laughs> One of the framed photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheersing them. <laughs> you look closely and see that there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. A scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Power tool? Freshly starched collar? Piece of wood floating in a lake? Summer of 69? <laughs> no. It's one of those secret recipe ingredients. It's... <sighs> I guess we're just gonna go door now. Oh, Jesus Christ. You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in its scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they mean? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he's been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. Aww. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket! You forgot to take it off. Um. Hmm. I'm gonna tell the truth. You confess. Hey. I think I've developed feelings for you. I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, Anthus? I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm still at his house. You awake to a beautiful morning at Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient that you just learned about. I wonder what the fuck it could be. In some jurisdictions... It isn't even legal. But if the recipe is secret, then how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. <laughs> you taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous! My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Oh. Such confidence. Such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? I'm gonna flatter him. Because... <laughs> the other option makes me giggle. Anyway. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pull in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner. I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. 
Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school, after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him you'd better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure, I can get to know the little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends. But things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving? As if that's a typical first date to go on when, uh, with a talking pressure cooker? <laughs> And now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Marion time to tell her whole story, however. Bottled to the details of your own night is... Let's try that again. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date, too. Back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection... Wowzers. Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. <laughs> Jesus Christ. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. I'll order you one right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. His sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Uh. You can get your swirly dip, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Mm. Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. There is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? <gasps> you got some nerve, Anthus, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go cooking with that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Ever. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Anthus, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure I'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. <gasps> Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? <laughs> it was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say. It was bland. Excuse me, Anthus. I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. <gasps> Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, Anthus. No! Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slightly slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through pages. Oh, that's the book. It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in magic stuff. It's a grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. Find out. You open a page covered with arcane warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says around the edges of the page. I feel like I just touched my lip to my mic, and that was great. I could use the spell here that says it will erase anyone that I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is way drastic. Couldn't you just do something else, like anything else? Not ro not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine, it is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you, and a pretty good excuse to try it out. <sighs> Don't do it. 
you take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. Um... Uh, I'm gonna wait to see what happens. Oh no. Sprinkle stops in his tracks. He focuses on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking and control me at the squirrel outside. Terrence! I told you never come back here, Terrence! I will destroy you, Terrence! <laughs> Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? <laughs> you better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again! After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in a hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Anthus, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see... But before we can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class! You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. Or... But no! You had to show off to your cool kid friends, Jeff and Joan, J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? <laughs> yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. <laughs> then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Sad beep. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. <laughs> no amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. <laughs> Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks... okay? Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't just see an entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud break, public breakup to cast to Paul over the final day of school. Well, that was... unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming pom competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Okay, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, and she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me? Of course not. Well... Maybe, sort of, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it, and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank, or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the, f for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and, hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special suit. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it. Lap it up. Okay. While you were pep-talking, Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it. The location of your final challenge. A test of will. A test of courage. A test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his evil er counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on, Anthus's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Anthus, what are you doing here? 
There's still time before the exam. Oh, it's just... Taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Mm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily stare at your, share your food with anyone who's hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires. But that decision gets hard to stick to when... The oven timer goes off behind you. Fess up about your practice dish. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. He knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all-butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? <laughs> no. I can smell that it was made with a heaping help of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking and I could eat this all day. <laughs> There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules! That is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are pre prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top shelves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. <laughs> Colonel Sanders seems to be the harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone's calling out a really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash! Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, best. <laughs> Baster blaster. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roll. Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. Even Clint gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clint learn to speak English? <gasps> it's a singularity, as was foretold. <gasps> we mustn't let it happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. self district Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out to the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spellbook out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? N uh, I'm, no. No. Because that's the easy way, and we gotta do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm gonna do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wake from across the room. I believe in you, Anthus. Miriam notices too. Aww. And I've always believed in you, Anthus, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. You turn and notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but... Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Miriam! Oh my god. <laughs> it's the secret ingredient. Oh no. However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get I have new from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up in the dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the Spark Monster. Steve? Wait, what happened to Borco? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Spark Monsters are many. I think Borco had the day off, but you have conjured Steve and I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty alright. Well, hey, you're in the middle of cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really, really impress me. What if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Oh, God. 
Steve, the spork monster, notices that you've got the grim grimoire stash beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? Oh, y yeah, you guessed it. Sort of. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles into a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef anyhow. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country... You can feel Spork Monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably a little lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time Monster School that I had falling asleep during scare tax class, and then when I woke up, you toss a serious stare at Steve, and he takes the hint. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. Uh, you summon extra power from deep down within yourself. I could do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, Anthus, you're the chosen one. You'll avenge me. Shut the fuck up. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You've interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful, because while you were powering up your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven, it can't be served. But don't worry, dear Anthus. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you've earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling out with punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting, if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union? Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everyone's been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop, clink. From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. I'm flying. It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me guess. Did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing as he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks. Pranks. Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature whir, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it's been a long semester. Wow, three whole days ago. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles in savory soup. Oh my god. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny neuromag... <laughs> Narutomaki, I spy afloat this itsy bitsy bowl. Yes, Chef. Please, call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. Yes, Sprinkles. And some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pick pink dog, freaking dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime. Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. 
A plus. Really do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Anthus, for helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made... Uni over smooth egg custard in an axe-hewn urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second, different cutter type of urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? <laughs> That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is my kind of brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close enough on account of the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof woof! Please be gentle with my cuisine! <laughs> Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He rolls back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Ouch, my tongue! The professor appeals to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. Death qualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour. Don't this count? The, 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 yeah. <laughs> this isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue after for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made... Orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school? Got toast in your ears or something, Anthus? I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it, and I did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. Uh, I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard, you might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, eaten it cannot be judged. You are disqualified! Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you! And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by a trying to be a fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me, either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cook, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh. I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I'd seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this... This... Thing... And completely blow me away! Oh, Jesus Christ. In my 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class! You pass, you pass, and you get a pass, and you get a pass! <laughs> Thank you, Oprah. Everyone gathers around and partakes in the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win! Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive that even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back and in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone's passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve this as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. DJ Dog's in the house! You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but a world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting! No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. <laughs> I'm 
was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh. Amusing. And now that everyone is together... It's the Spork Monster! He's totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name. Party Monster. Student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone's too wrapped up by talking to Spork... Sorry. <laughs> Spork Monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love of her cooking, and you know, she's gonna do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop! He arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see it perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And we got a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. The music of the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparkling and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I'm actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? <laughs> I actually feel like I knew this whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my, my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear that she's managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand. Kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives! Howdy, classmates! Oh my god. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed an entire class. However, it's not enough to just give him a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal! I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? No, it's not the end! As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Santhus? I, I couldn't help but wonder. Was our final exam team up, team up purely an act of strategy carried out by two cunning chefs, or was it something more? I'm afraid I can't answer that question directly. Instead, I'd like to ask you a question of my own. May I have this dosido? -si -do? Colonel Sanders extends his hand to you, and you feel a surge of energy jump off the tips of his fingers. His hand. The hand of a master chef. So dedicated to the craft of fine cookery. So tender, yet refined. So milky smooth, fingers like finely battered drumsticks. Turned in flour, soaked in buttermilk, and dusted with exotic spices. But they do not reach for tongs, a knife, or even a spork. Tonight, they reach for... For you. And though our feet may tire of dancing, I believe that this is just the beginning of our steps together. Colonel Sanders, I... Will you not only join me on the dance floor, but in the kitchen, as my co-chef and partner in both business and in life? You gasp! Could it be? Is he really saying? Me and you? Together? Ever since I met you, my dream has changed. It's not enough to simply open the world's greatest chain of fried chicken restaurants. No. Even then, my life would be incomplete without you by my side. So what do you say, partner? I say, I love you, Colonel Sanders. The for real end? Wow. That was a life-changing three days. Overwhelmed by everything that just happened between you and Colonel Sanders, you step outside to get some air. The quad is dark and quiet. Too quiet. You start to smell something salty. Potatoey. gravy e. Just then, Spork Monster appears. Hi, Anthus. You had some pretty sweet dance moves back there. Why, thank you. You weren't too shabby yourself. That moonwalk you did was pretty cool. Oh, you noticed? I'm embarrassed. Anyways, I had something to ask you. You see, life as a potato-like creature is difficult. I have no place to call home other than people's nightmares. Oh, I, I had no idea. I was wondering if I might be able to go home with you. Permanently. 
I'll run out and get the paper in the morning and everything. What do you say? Yes. Adopt him. He's adorable. My hero! I will forever be in your debt. The end. Seriously, though. It really is this time. Oh, Jesus Christ. That was, I love you, Colonel Sanders. It was beautiful. I should cosplay him. I, I should cosplay him. 